that some international, multinational corporation of sorts was, you know, was owned and controlled by me. Right. And, um, you know, for, for many, many, many years. But, um, you know, again, just part of all of that attention that law enforcement, whether it was feds, whether it was local, it was all, you know, basically investigating the hip-hop industry did the, uh, for years. Did the, the East Coast, West Coast hip-hop beef create problems at the source? Being as though, uh, you know, of course you had to cover both perspectives, the East and the West. What was your life like when all of that shit was going on? Oh. Take me back to like 97, 98. But that was, I mean, by then it was over, you know, 97, 98, you know, the boxers had been killed I mean, and big had been killed. You're right. You know? Prior to 97, 98, give me 90, between 95 and 96, the summers. I mean, you know, it didn't, uh, again, that, that whole situation didn't per se affect the source um, in any way, you know, and, and you, perhaps it might have affected the source awards continuing after that year of 95, which was the year where, you know, they should have went on stage. And you was in the building that night? And, I mean, that was my show. I put that show together. I, I invited, put the seating chart together, you know, negotiated every deal with every artist. Did you feel it was going to be some shit that night? Um, no. I, you know. So before Suge and Danny Boy got on the stage and made their little, you know, he gave his speech, he was totally oblivious yeah. to everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know the extent at that point nobody knew that Pac was getting ready to sign with death Row, okay and at that point there wasn't really a beef between uh death row and, and bad boy mm -hmm. um or you know uh so you know Pac was having his he was locked up and he was having problems you know with bad boy and big e and all that was going on but but Suge and death row and snoop and dre and you know, all the, the whole death row that came that night, you know, there was no connection at that point really between them and Bad Boy having a beef. So, you know, it wasn't expected. I didn't, you know, you know, it just kind of happened. After, after it happened, what did you say? Like, did you know, like, what, what, what was going through your mind? Like, what the fuck was that about? Well, I mean, it was just trying to keep things under control and, and make sure, you know, everything stayed under control. So people have, immediately got hostile after that happened? I mean, there was a lot of tension, of course. I mean, there was a lot of tension, you know. I mean, you know, Buff was there with all his people. Shug was there, you know, with a lot of people. And, um, you know, there was definitely, you know, tension behind that. But, you know, there was no violence there. I mean, that's also a common, you know, misperception a lot of times about the source of wars. I mean, Nobody ever got shot, stabbed, and even that night there wasn't any fights or, or, or beef, you know, physical beef that night. Just right. words and you know, looks or whatever, but no, no actual. You got any shit? Nice stories, any encounters? <laughs> um, now, I mean, you know, I knew Shug very well from you know the early '90s when when Death Row first started and you know before the Chronic, you know, came out, and uh, I built a great relationship with him over the years. And, he always supported me. That Source Awards, you know, was, was uh, very important for the Source and for hip hop. And uh, I mean, he spent a ton of money to come out that whole opening set that night. And, you know, if you look at the '95 Awards with the, the jail set, with the whole death row. You know, so that Shug had you lit, huh? Yeah, he was. You know, he, he, was, he was supporting the Source, and we, we were supporting him because they were, you know, they were doing their thing. Uh, so uh, you know, I have probably have some stories. And, been around him a lot, a lot of times, you know. And, uh, uh, but uh, does he have a presence about him when he enters the room? Um, yeah, sure. The action, did you write stories when you were at the source, or did you just handle the executive portion of, of, of the um, business? I, I, I rarely wrote anything for the magazine. In the early, early days, I might have written a record review or this or that a couple right. of times or an editorial letter, but mostly I was just, you know, running the whole operation. But I was definitely involved, you know, in the editorial process and the covers in particular, you know, the cover of the source was, you know, was a very uh, important thing. For, for us and for people in hip hop, and you know, so I was definitely involved in a, a lot of those types of things. Who came up with the uh, the five mic? Um, the five the five mic review. Who, who's five mics. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, there was a, there was a, a, a few guys that worked in the editorial department when we, when we 
first moved into, into New York. Um, and uh, they call themselves the Mind Squad. And, um, you know, I think as a group, I, I, I don't know exactly the one person who came up with that with that terminology, but I think we've come up with as a group of creating a rating system. It started that way, you know, it was five records at first, and then it got switched to the five mics maybe a year or so later. It was a lot of talented people that, that appeared in the source. I like to, um, when I'm flipping through some of them, I like to look at the cartoons at the very, very back. What happened to the guys that did that drew the cartoons? Oh, a lot of them are still around. I just the, the one you're talking about is the last word. That's yeah. Andre Leroy Davis. Uh, he actually came down here for the Hip Hop Museum. We did a panel that he participated in a few months ago here in D.C. He's in New York. He's still doing art. You know, he still gets hired to do lots of you know big jobs, and his work has been shown you know across the world. And, uh, you know, he's doing good, and then, uh, you know, the Boondocks, I discovered the Boondocks, and uh, put that, you know, comic strip in the they source. They sure did, went from the fucking source to a cartoon yeah. on TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, we had uh, the view from the underground, that was the original cartoon, Carlito Rodriguez, and a couple other guys who did that. Carlito is now a writer for Empire, so he's doing his thing. He went on to become the editor-in-chief of the source for many years. So, I mean, there's countless people who got their starts, you know, at the source, working there, and have gone on to many, many other things. You know, a lot of, a lot of people out here. No doubt. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you, man, in person, man. You're a real media giant, a legend, and I'm following in your steps. I'm just online. I'm trying to make my mark, and I'm on my way. Yeah. And um. As long as I keep coming with this dope content, interviewing people of your caliber, I'm going to get there, man. I really appreciate your time, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Thanks for coming out, man. Give me a drop for Gully TV, man, from David Mays. All right. What's going on, y'all? This is Dave Mays, creator of The Source, The Source Awards. And I'm, I'm here shouting out Gully TV. They're out here at the Hip Hop Museum. Pop-up experience, something new I just created coming to your city soon. No doubt. I know you were shook when Suge then was in the building that night, man. <laughs> that, was my, that was my guy, man. No uh, that was my guy. Man. No oh, doubt. Free Suge, man. Appreciate yeah. you, Dave. No I'm a motherfucking chick. Yeah, I'm talking murder, but it's me. But it's me. I'm really living everything you see. What you say? They allow to make a lie out of me. To the day that I expire, I'm a G. I'm a motherfucking chick. They would love to make a lie out of Razor. Catch him up, dog, with the...